know, Tesla gets a lot of regulatory oversight on the automotive front. I and mean, we're subject to, I think, over 100 regulatory agencies domestically and internationally. So it's, a, it's a lot. Um, you could fill this room with the all the regulations that Tesla has to adhere to for automotive. Um, same is true in, you know, for rockets and for, you know, um, currently the limiting factor for SpaceX for Starship launch is regulatory approval. Uh, the FAA has actually given their approval, but we're, we're waiting for Fish and Wildlife to uh, finish their analysis and give their approval. That, that's why I posted, I want to buy a fish license on, <laughs> which also refers to the Monty Python sketch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why do you need a license for your fish? I, I don't know. <laughs> why, but according to the rules, I'm told you need some sort of fish license or something. We effectively need a fish license to launch a rocket. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. How did the fish come into the picture? Yeah. Um I mean so, some of the things like that that it's I feel like are so absurd that I want to do like a comedy sketch and flash at the bottom this is all real. This yeah. is actually what happened. Mm -hmm. Um you know, one of the things that was a bit of a challenge at one point is that they were worried about uh our rocket hitting a shark. Mm -hmm. And um now, the ocean is very big, and uh, how often do you see sharks? Uh, not that often, you know. As a percentage of ocean surface area, sharks basically are zero. And 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 so then we will, then we said, well, how will we calculate the probability of, of telling a shark? And they're like, well, we can't give you that information because we're, they're worried about shark hunt, shark fin hunters uh, going and hunting sharks. And I said, well, how are we supposed to? We're on the horns of a dilemma then. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then they said, well, there's another part of fish and wildlife that can can do this analysis. I'm like, well, why don't you give them the data? I'm like, we don't, they don't, we don't trust them. I'm like, excuse me? You don't, they're literally in your department. Yeah. But again, this is actually what happened. Um, and, uh, and, and, and then can you do an NDA or something? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, they managed to solve the internal quandary and indeed uh, the probability of, say, of us hitting a shock is essentially zero. Um, then there's another organization that I didn't realize existed until, uh, you know, a few months ago, uh, that cares about whether you, we would potentially hit a whale in international waters. Now, again, you look at the surface of the, look at the, look at the Pacific and say, what percentage of this, the Pacific consists of whale? Like, it'll give you a big picture and like point out all the whales in this picture. I'm like, I don't see any whales. <laughs> it's like basically 0%. Um, and if our rocket does hit a whale, which is extremely unlikely beyond all belief, um, that is the, the fate had it in, that's a, a whale has some seriously bad luck. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the least lucky whale ever. Um, and um, I mean, this is quite absurd. Yeah. Uh, bureaucracy, <laughs> the bureaucracy of this, however it emerged. Yes. Well, I, I mean, one, one of the things that's pretty wild is um, for launching out of Vandenberg in California. We had to, they were worried about uh, seal procreation, whether the seals would be dismayed by the sonic booms. Um, now, there've been a lot of rockets launched out of Vandenberg and the seal population has uh, steadily increased. Um, so if anything, rocket booms are an aphrodisiac um, based on the evidence, if you would correlate rocket launches with uh, seal population. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, we were forced to kidnap a seal, strap it to a board, put it, headphones on the seal and play sonic boom sounds to it to see if it would be distressed. This is an actual thing that happened. This is actually real. I have pictures. <laughs> I would, I would love, love to see this. Yeah. There's, I mean, a, I'm sorry. There's a seal with headphones. <laughs> yes. It's a seal with headphones yeah. strapped to a board. And, and like, the okay, now the amazing part is how calm the seal was. Yeah, because if I was a seal, I'd be like, "This is the end. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely going to eat me." Yeah. Um, how will the seal when the seal goes back to other, you know, its seal friends? How's he going to explain that? They're never going to believe him. Never going to believe him. And that's why I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, it's sort of like it's like getting kidnapped by aliens and getting an anal probe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you come back and say, "I swear to God, yeah. I got kidnapped by aliens. And they stuck an anal probe in my butt." And you're like, "No, they." Didn't? Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's it's seal some, it's seal buddies are never going to believe him that he gets strapped to a board and they put headphones on his ears, <laughs> <laughs> and then let him go. <laughs> Twice, by the way, we had to do it. 
twice. Th- they let him go twice. We had to catch the same seal. Well, no, different seal. Oh, okay. <laughs> did you uh, did you get a seal of approval? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A <laughs> seal of approval. No, I mean this is right. this is like I don't think the public is quite aware of the the madness that goes on. Yeah, it's yeah. It's absurd. Frickin' seals with frickin' headphones. headphones. I mean, this is the I mean, it's a good encapsulation of, of the absurdity of human civilization, seals and headphones. Yes. 